This episode is set near the end of the second season of the original Dubby and Carrie show. Welcome to the Tuscany Tavern, James. What would you like to eat? A small pepperoni pizza and a glass of lemonade. Mother did tell you I earned a free meal here as a reward for making straight A's on my report card, right? She did indeed. Have a seat and your meal will be out soon. Sandy later arrives at the restaurant. She goes to the kitchen to confer with Lucy. I've ordered a dozen turkeys for this restaurant and we will have a special item on the menu for Thanksgiving, turkey sandwiches. We will put out a poster by the front door advertising the new item. Here is the poster. Great idea. I'll have Mrs. Bentley start work on the turkeys as soon as they arrive. This stage production of the first moon landing you are working on is quite impressive. So, who will play the astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin? I was actually going to ask if you and James could play the astronauts. You are the two best students in my science class, after all. Seriously? You do realize I am a girl, right? That doesn't matter. You are far more heroic than most boys I know. I actually approved of that assault you did on my nephew Ted after he tried to molest Penny Bentley. Having to face the wrath of her own Uncle Wayne was awkward as hell, and it would have been worse for me had you not already punished Ted. So thank you. And for the record, it was because of my intervention that you weren't suspended by Mr. Hernandez. So you actually sided with me against your own nephew? I never would have expected that. It's precisely because he is my nephew that I feel so embarrassed. And it's not just Ted. My brother Leonard who is Ted's father bullied me when we were kids, and it disturbed me to see Ted turning out like Leonard. Why would your own brother torment you like that? I'd think brothers would be best friends too. Sometimes people who are brought up together and are otherwise much alike only see the worst in each other. Like the Gallagher brothers and the rock band Oasis. I refused to be Leonard's lapdog just because he was born two years before me, and he hated me for that. I was more than happy to leave home at age 18 to get away from Leonard. And then our father forced us back together by making us co-owners of the hospital he founded after he died. Biggest mistake that otherwise noble man ever made. Well, at least your brother is not the sole owner of that place. That would be much worse. So next week, we will have a stage play about the first landing on the moon. And I have chosen Carrie Sims to play Neil Armstrong and James Smith to play Buzz Aldrin. Wow, what a great honor. Uncle Simon, how could you even think of giving Carrie Sims the role of an astronaut? The part of Neil Armstrong should have gone to me. Wait until father hears about this. What can he do about it? It's my science class and I am the director of the play, so you and your father should just butt out. Now get out. Your defiant attitude toward father is a disgrace. I'm going to step off the LM now. That's one small step for a man. One giant leap for mankind. Okay, I'm going to close the hatch now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Isn't that something? Magnificent sight, isn't it? Magnificent Desolation James, what are you doing? That's not in the script. I'm... I'm sorry, Carrie. It's been awkward enough seeing you with my sister, knowing how I feel for you, but us working together with this play makes me feel worse. You are in love with me? Well... I guess you can't help having feelings, but you need to learn to control them. Debbie is my soulmate. And you should look for someone your own age that you can relate to. You are only 12 and I am 15. And I feel like I'm also a big sister of yours. Find someone else and you will be happier. Ah, here's a website denying the moon landings. Look at all these arguments. I wonder why people didn't notice these before? I'll just print out these pages and hand them out among my classmates. And thus make my uncle look bad. That stupid nephew of yours is causing trouble again. What did he do this time, Wayne? He gave me and others in my history class these papers. 
What? I know Ted is not that bright, but I didn't think even he would fall for crap like this. I guess with the internet, all sorts of bullshit gets spread around and people who want to believe whatever delusional crap they assume thus find excuses to do so. Still, this needs to be dealt with. I think Ted is doing this only because I refuse to cast him as Neil Armstrong in the upcoming play I am producing. If Ted Wilson thinks he can derail our play with this shitty propaganda, he's got another thing coming. That's right. I have an idea. What if we cancelled the play and instead directly challenged Ted to a debate over if the moon landings were faked or not? The same internet that he got his bullshit from must also have counter-arguments to those false claims. I can look them up. And then I will make him a laughing stock in public. Are you excited at seeing your son take on Ted Wilson with words instead of his fists? He will mop the floor with that bully. I just hope both I and Simon Wilson taught James well. <laughs> James is incredibly smart. And Ted is an idiot. This shouldn't be a problem for us. I love you. My premise is that the moon landings were faked because the United States really didn't have the technology and resources to beat the Soviet Union in the space race to the moon. So they staged the landings on a movie set. Have you ever noticed that in the published pictures of the surface conditions on the moon, you never see the stars? Why not? The absence of stars is what you might expect if the pics were not taken on the moon, but in an enclosed warehouse or other large building. Also, when the astronauts plan to flag on the moon, it appears to be fluttering like wind is blowing on it. But the moon is supposed to have no atmosphere. That's ridiculous. Any picture that would show the faint stars would overexpose the moon itself, making everything on the moon look completely white. Such a pic is useless for showing details on the moon's surface. And as for the flag, the movement of it was due to it being shaken as it was being planted. That shaking would have stopped in a few minutes. That is different from the fluttering actions of the flag being blown by wind, which would be constant as long as the wind is blowing. You're not knowing the difference is ignorance. You claim to be a patriotic American, yet here you are accusing your own country of lying to the public. Even the Soviet authorities, the losers in the space race, never challenged the validity of the moon landings. So why do you? Because your uncle refused to make you the lead actor in a play about the first moon landing. Instead, he gave that role to Carrie Sims, who beat you in the boys' room. Isn't that right? She embarrassed you, so you wanted revenge. <laughs> Congratulations. James did exactly as he intended. My nephew is being humiliated in front of all his classmates. I'm satisfied. Oh, and happy Thanksgiving. I hope you will come to the Tuscany Tavern for our turkey sandwiches. My wife actually enjoys cooking, so I will decline, but thanks anyway. <laughs>